Hey everybody, welcome to a new video in a mini-series that I like to call Talking Talons. I know what you're thinking, is there going to be a whoosh sound effect to accompany that? There it is. So what is a talon? A talon is one of these things. These clip onto fireworks and it's one way you can electronically ignite them. So let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this. There we go. So this clips onto your fuse and you might be able to see in the middle of that there's a little wire. It's a nichrome wire. And what happens is you pass a voltage a current through this wire. It makes this glow really hot and that in turn ignites the visco fuse. So you may also know if you've been following my channel that I recently invested in a new FireTech firing system and I was curious to see how well this supports Talon igniters. So I did a series of tests and here's the video. So for the first test I connected a single rail to each of the four output ports on the FTQ1664 mod. Each rail was connected with a 20 meter cable. Now typically you ideally wouldn't need to use cables that are that long, but I really wanted to test the capabilities of the FireTech system when it came to firing talons. On each of the four rails I connected a single talon igniter into the fourth channel of the rail. I created a small show script that assumed E matches on the first three channels of each rail and then a talon on the fourth, firing on a two second impulse and with a one second delay between each of the four cues. My script was duplicated so that each of the four rails would fire in unison. To aid visibility of the talons firing, I attached a short piece of visco fuse to each. And just for completeness, before each run of my show script, I ensured that the firing voltage of the FireTech system was at least 20 volts. So let's have a look at how FireTech managed with four talons fired simultaneously over four 20 meter branches of cable. I'm pleased to report that all four talons fired. However, as you may know if you've watched some of my other FireTech videos, one of the really cool things about the modules and controllers is the real time indicator of continuity. Interestingly, after this script ran, the talons on rails two and four were still showing continuity, despite all four talons igniting their respective visco fuses. So it appears that whilst the nichrome wire in all four talons was hot enough to ignite visco fuse, the electrical current passing through two of them was not sufficient to burn through and break that nichrome wire. I ran the script again, and sure enough, the talons on rails two and four glowed. After a second run, I was still seeing continuity on the talon on rail two. So I ran the script a third time. And I still saw continuity on the talon on rail two after that. In fact, I had to run the script a further two times before the talon on rail two finally burnt through completely. So test one demonstrated that I can fire four talons simultaneously with each talon connected to a rail, which in turn was connected to a separate output port on the module via a 20 meter cable. But the firing power was not sufficient to actually fully burn through all of the talons. So let's move on to test two. Now, one of the cool things about the FireTech rails is that they have both an input and an output, allowing you to daisy chain rails one after another. So for my second test, I connected the four rails in series to just one of the output ports of the FireTech module, again using 20 meter cables. So there was a 20 meter cable from the module to the first rail, and then a 20 meter cable from the first to the second rail, and so forth. The talon then on the last rail was effectively the equivalent of an 80 meter cable length from the module. Again, a talon was connected to the fourth channel of each rail and the same script as was used in my first test was used again. Here's what happened. So the talons on the first and second rails fired, but the talons on the third and fourth rails didn't. Interestingly as well, if you look closely, you can see that the talon on the second rail actually only fired after the talon on the first rail had fired, when really I was expecting them both to fire simultaneously. I ran the script again to see if a second run, now that the talons on the first two rails had fired, would fire the talons on rails three and four. It didn't. In fact, I ran it several more times and rails three and four still didn't fire. 
Just to double check that there wasn't an issue with the talons on rails 3 and 4, I took the first two rails out of the chain and plugged the third rail directly into the module, with the fourth rail then still daisy chained off that third rail. This time both talons fired together, which is interesting as this differed from the results when I had all four rails connected in a chain, as that initial firing fired the talon on rail 1 and then subsequently the talon on rail 2 rather than firing them both together. So what can I determine from this second set of tests? Well, a talon will fire on a 20 meter cable, and indeed on a 40 meter cable, provided there are no other talons on the same circuit. At distances over 40 meters though, in my testing, FireTech couldn't fire talons. Test three. Now in more recent versions of the FireTech firmware, you can actually control the impulse time of talons. The impulse time is a measure of how long current will pass through a channel when it's fired. I'll cover how to control that impulse time in another video, but by default, FireTech uses an impulse time for talons of two seconds. And that's what I used in these first two tests. For this third test, however, I increased the impulse time to five seconds and used the same setup as test two. So four rails daisy chained together with 20 meter cables in between. Let's see what happened. Once again, only the talons on the first two rails fired and again, the second one fired after the first had finished. I did a second run of the script after the talons on the first two had fired and on this run, the talon on rail three, so 60 meters out from the controller, fired. But the talon on rail four at 80 meters still failed to fire. So I tried a third run of the script now that the first three talons were spent. And yes, finally the talon on rail four did ignite. So what can I deduce from this third set of tests? Well, increasing the impulse firing time for talons from two seconds to five seconds certainly made a bit of a difference. Unlike in the second set of tests, I was able to finally get the talons on rails three and four to fire, but only after the talons on preceding rails had fired. The drawback to increasing the impulse time for talons from two to five seconds is that you can't fire anything else on that module whilst the channel is in the middle of firing. So if you needed to fire another cue within five seconds of a talon firing, you'd have to fire that from a different module. Test four. For comparison, I wanted to see how the setup I'd been using in the previous two tests held up with E-match igniters rather than talons. Now E-matches require far less current to fire. So let's see what happens with four E-matches instead of four talons. Interestingly, only the E-matches on the first three rails fired. The one on the fourth rail, 80 meters from the module, didn't. On a second run of the script, the E-match on rail 4 then fired. So what can I conclude from this comparison? Well, I can simultaneously fire three E-matches at 20 meter intervals over a 60 meter cable run, compared to just two talons at 20 meter intervals over a 40 meter cable run. Test five. If you recall, in the first set of tests, I had a rail connected to each of the four output ports on my FireTech module. As a result, my show script needed to contain cues to fire four channels, one on each port, simultaneously. In the past few sets of tests though, you'll have seen that I only used one output port on the module, yet I still use the same show script as the first tests. So does it make a difference if I rewrite my show script to only fire one channel from one port, as opposed to one channel from all four ports? Let's take a look. No, it didn't make any difference. The talons on rails three and four still didn't fire, even with my reduced script. Test six. So going back to impulse time, in some of the previous tests, we used the default talon impulse time of two seconds, and we also increased that to five. But I was curious to know what was the shortest impulse time that would fire a talon. So in this next test, I had a single rail on a 20 meter cable, and I connected seven short talon igniters to the first seven channels. In my show script, I set them to fire sequentially, but with an increasing impulse time for each. So on the first talon, I set a standard E-match pulse, which is very short. On the second talon, I set a half second impulse. 
on the third a one second impulse, then a 1.5 second impulse and so on, increasing by half a second each time, all the way up to the seventh talon which was firing on a three second impulse. Let's see then what happens and let's see what the minimum impulse is required to ignite a talon. As demonstrated, under this particular setup, anything less than a two second impulse failed to ignite the Talon. Test 7. In addition to being able to script shows for the FireTech firing system, the controller also allows you to manually fire channels. Sadly, this is only configured for manually firing E matches due to the short impulse time it produces. However, as you can repeatedly manually fire the same channel again and again, I wondered if pressing the manual fire button repeatedly several times in quick succession, would that be capable of manually firing a talon? So with a single talon connected to a rail on a 20 meter cable, here's what happened. And the short beeps you'll hear correspond to each press I made of the manual fire button. After nine presses of the manual fire button, the Talon did actually ignite. So those were my initial set of tests, and I've got to admit, I was actually quite disappointed with the results. Some of the displays I do are quite Talon heavy. Why? Well, because it significantly reduces setup time, as I can prep a lot more off site in advance. If you've seen some of the videos of my displays, I tend to do quite a lot of front sights spaced out, in an ideal world, I'd have had a FireTech module on each of those front sites, and that way I could keep cabling and cable links down to an absolute minimum. Practically though, I don't have dozens of FireTech modules, sadly, so I have to make modules cover more than one firing position, and as a result, cable runs can become quite lengthy. Don't get me wrong, FireTech does support talons, but for most pro users, this won't be an issue, as they'll be using e-matches anyway exclusively. But what about semi-pros or hobbyists who need to use talons? When I was first researching a new firing system, I read that you could connect an external battery to FireTech modules to boost the firing voltage, making it ideal for use with talons. So I was disappointed to subsequently learn that this capability is actually no longer available in the latest FireTech hardware. And connecting an external battery does nothing other than simply extending the standby time of the module. But it's not all doom and gloom. A few days after mulling over the somewhat disappointing results from these talent tests, I came up with an idea. Would using RJ45 splitters make any difference? An RJ45 splitter basically allows two network cables to be connected to one. In all my previous tests, I'd connected the rails directly to the module or I daisy chain them together one after the other. But let's have a look at what happens if we introduce splitters. Test 8. In this test, rather than daisy chaining four rails from a single port on the module, I instead connected a short 50cm cable to one module output port. On the end of this, I connected a two way splitter, to which I connected two more short 50cm cables. And then on the ends of these, I then connected two more splitters. So I'd basically got four cable outputs from a single port on the module. Onto each of these outputs, I then connected 20 meter cables to rails. Finally, a talon was connected to each rail. Using my original test script, would this cable configuration allow all four talons to fire simultaneously? Let's take a look. Yes, result, all four talons fired. I'd only use one output port on the module and I could have four firing sites simultaneously firing talons. So how is this different from the results of my very first test? If you recall, that had four rails connected directly to the controller from the four different outputs over 20 meter cables. Whilst that test did fire all four talons, they didn't all fully burn through on the first fire, which they did in this latest test using the splitters. Also, that original test used up all four output ports on the module. This latest test only used one. So let's summarize. What conclusions can I draw from how well FireTech performs with talons? Well, the FireTech system works better with Emacs than talons. 
Whilst Firetech does support Talons, they actually actively discourage their use. If you do use Talons, be sure to keep the cables between modules and rails as short as you possibly can. Use the right kind of cables with your Firetech system too. I did a video on the best cables to use with Firetech and you'll find a link to that in the corner of your screen now. If you need to connect multiple rails to a single output port on a Firetech module, use splitters rather than daisy chaining rails together. If you need to fire multiple talons on the same channel, consider increasing the impulse time on that channel in your show script. I'll show you how to do that in another video. But do bear in mind that you then won't be able to fire any other channels on that module whilst it's in the middle of firing another channel. And finally, test, test, test. If you're going to be using talons in a live show, make sure you test them beforehand. So I hope you found that video useful. Has it put me off using talons with my Firetech firing system? No, but I'm glad that I did all that testing prior to using them for the first time on a live show. Otherwise, part of my show might not have fired. Well, thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video why not consider subscribing to my channel for more great firework content and more fire tech content too.